All right. So um, this koi, for those people that maybe aren't so new to the hobby, or sorry, aren't so old to the hobby, um, is Sanke, or otherwise known as Taisho Sanshoku. Sanshoku meaning three colours. Um, so you've got basically a kahaku in this case with smaller sumi markings, um, and that's really how you would identify it as being a Sanke. Um, whereas Showa, on the other hand, would be much more dominant in the sumi area or the sumi element of the fish. So, as I say, this is Sanke. Um, for me, I think this is a particularly nice example. This fish actually came here as Nisai, I think it was 54 or 55 centimetres in spring of last year. Um, the fish is now Sanzai, now measures 67 cm. Um, this body structure, I think, is really, really nice on this fish. The fish isn't carrying any excess weight. The overall like, height structure of the fish is nice. The body line of the fish is really nice. The amount of body shape it's carrying for this age, I think, is pretty much ideal. Head shape as well, I think, is really nice. Colour quality on this fish is, I think, extremely good. Um, Kiva also is very nice. Sashi style is very nice. Sashi being the front edge of the pattern where the red scales basically underlie white skin. That area, the refinement's really good and to me that area is actually very important because the sashi area really determines how refined the koi will be when the fish grows up. So it is really important. Sumi placement on this fish is beautiful. Um, if you look just behind the head we've got that kind of area of shoulder sumi there but even if that wasn't there, the next area further back on the shoulder is just really nicely placed, that area of sumi. Um, and all of the sumi through the fish is just really balanced and I think just the right amount of sumi. And I think with this quality of sumi in the future, it will thicken up and consolidate. And hopefully, by my impression of it, hopefully will become really nice and refined. You won't end up with any like small, low quality sumi. It should be nice decent sized blocks of sumi with really nice finish to the sumi and also really nice kiwa to the sumi which is also important so sumi finish in itself is actually just as important just as important as the actual sumi quality itself and i think this fish in those areas i think really is extremely good i think it's a very promising fish this fish is likely to stay here i think I don't know, certainly through next year, but I think it's probably going to stay here another two or three years. And for us, it's one that we will try to raise really well. So sumi, yeah, basically is black. Sumi is also another word for like ink or squid ink. So if you look at squid, the black ink that they um, screw it out if you upset them, that is basically what sumi is. Um, so yeah. Um, otherwise sumi is also known as being like charcoal, carbon, that kind of thing, burnt wood is also sumi. So sumi in this case needs to be as black as possible, as thick as possible and as shiny as possible. If you have surface sumi that has no sashi to it, that kind of sumi tends to have no finish. It tends to look like grey sumi with no thickness, no shine. So actually sumi sashi, like underlying sumi, is actually also important. That you can see on the shoulder area because that gives you some impression that the sumi thickness is going to be really nice when the fish grows up. If it starts out as just surface sumi it tends to just stay surface sumi which will never be as nice a quality. So if you look at the All Japan Koi show this coming weekend I think this kind of fish is a really nice prospect for the show but right now the fish isn't really suited to showing because it needs more sumi finish. So for the koi show, this kind of fish is sansai. This body structure of the future is ideal. This is perfect. But for the koi show, this kind of body structure at the koi show, really a little bit more volume would be desired, would make it just a little bit stronger. But my argument really with this kind of fish is if it's got more volume, it's probably got more volume because the fish won't grow so big. Um, so. For the future, I think this is ideal. For the Koi show, a little bit more body weight would be ideal, and certainly more sumi finish. So a more more progress, more progress with the sumi would be stronger for the show. 
Um, color quality is good, but again, really, color quality, if that had more finish, uh, would be stronger. I think this same fish, in a year's time, will have the ideal kind of look to the color and the ideal look to the sumi that it would need if it was going to go to the koi show this, week, this coming weekend. So um, it's kind of like a year behind, I think, in its progress that it would need to be strong at the koi show. So this Sanko um, is another fish that arrived with us in spring um, of last year as an east side. Uh, this one came in bigger. This was about 56, 57 cm and she's now 68 and a half. And I think this body structure again I think is really good. Um, body structure for potential size I think is actually a little bit better than the last fish. The last fish, the body shape itself I think is more predictable like how it's going to put on weight and how the body's going to look when the fish is older. The last one I think is more predictable. This fish, the actual bone structure I think is a little bit better and the body structure is slightly stronger but at the same time it's carrying a little bit less weight and it's harder to say just how the body is going to put on weight and how it's going to look when the fish is bigger. What I really like about this fish, I mean the pattern in itself I think is nice, but as Nisai, this fish had almost no sumi at all. I'll send you a picture of it later, you can insert. Um, there was almost no sumi. There was indication of where sumi was going to fall, but just no idea as Nisai how much sumi it would get. And I think now it's just beautiful. Like the placement of the sumi is fantastic. Like the shoulder sumi on the white, there's almost nothing on top of the red, it's all on the white ground. But the shoulder area is lovely, and I think the actual kiwa style, sashi style of the sumi, I think is really nice. Um, and I think this kind of sumi, even on like this area here, is very easy to come up and consolidate and become really refined. What they sometimes talk about in Japan is a word called like katamaru, which is kind of means like Katamaro kind of means for sumi to come together and like group up if you like, group up, tighten up, that kind of meaning. And I think this kind of sumi, I think right now it looks really promising, really safe. And I think this fish in general, I think is just a really, really nice prospect. Head is also nice on the fish, but I think this fish really easy to get big. And I think really easy, <clears throat> excuse me, really easy to get enough sumi to be really good in the koi show. Again, right now, sumi finish isn't enough for the koi show. Um, but I think maybe another year or so, I think the finish on the sumi will be good enough to go. It needs like this area to come up just a bit more, this area to come up and thicken up, um, and more of this to kind of block up. With those changes, I think the fish will be much stronger in the show. And obviously, as we spoke with the last fish, the fish does also need more body weight to be stronger in the show. But right now, this is a fish that through last year, last summer has grown really well. And I think through the next summer as well, will also grow really, really well. So the fish is really, it's growing quickly. So it's not going to put on so much body weight until the fish starts getting bigger. But in this department, this is why I'm trying a lot harder through this last summer um, and through the winter we're in now in this coming summer I'm trying a lot harder to build up a lot more body so that next year at the Koi Show we will have a much more like competitive body style with how we're raising the fish. When I say that I mean not fat, the fish need more body weight, more body shape but not like fat, not chesty looking and not egg looking, it just needs more like muscle power, more shoulder power and so like a thicker shoulder of the fish the thicker body line, that is what I'm trying to get with the fish through this next year.
<clears throat> so this one came to us is Nissan last spring and came to us measuring 55 cm and she is now 68.5 this fish I think the body structure of this is fantastic now I think this kind of fish is really easy to build up a nice body on in the future to build up a big body and I think sometimes it's quite easy to look at body structure of a koi and think okay this fish can make a really nice body later on and can build up a big body later on but actually a lot of that is in the bloodline and particularly with Sankey. Sankey are kind of notorious in my experience for you have a young fish as Tosa or Nisai and you think oh yeah this bone structure is fantastic this fish will put on a lot of body it's going to look great when it's big but actually with Sankey quite often you can be fooled by it because when the fish grows up you can very often end up with a fish that actually it grows huge but it never ever puts on body and that is quite a, a common problem with Sankey. This particular bloodline I absolutely love because it to me they are very very consistent and very easy to build up body on so even if the fish is slim and you're not quite sure within the bloodline itself it's just really easy to build the body with these fish. This body structure like back shoulder pair of the fish is really nice um, head's really nice, long, long in the face, broad in the mouth. That head structure itself I think is very important and that is particularly good. Um, colour type on the fish is really nice, a little bit soft, um, which in this fish's case I think is important and I'll explain why. Um, Kiwi is really nice and I think Sashi style on the whole is nice. Now, when I talk about the softness of the colour in this fish's case if the colour is too hard too red too finished up the colour can be difficult to maintain in that regard this colour being a little bit softer um, if you look closely at the fish there's one or two scales like here where the colour is incomplete on the scales so you've got this scale in particular the colour is incomplete um, this area is not really so much to worry about as n too much now but this area, this scale needs to fill in. With this kind of colour, that colour is much easier to creep and fill. If the colour's harder, then that kind of colour doesn't tend to develop. So you end up with a colour weakness that stays with the fish as the fish grows. Kiwa on this fish is really nice. It's really nice marizomi all the way through the fish. And with Sanki, Kiwa doesn't tend to change much. With Gahaku, it can creep and move around a lot. It can creep backwards into the food current of the net scale easily. Um, with Sankey, the colour on the keyword areas tends to be a lot more fixed, um, so it doesn't tend to creep. So I think this fish, that kind of keyword all the way through, this kind of colour, that combination is really good. The rest of the sashi through the fish is ideal. Um, all the way through is absolutely perfect. Now, the shoulder area on the fish sashi has got a tendency to be a little bit deeper than it has further back on the fish if it's on the shoulder deeper sashi to me isn't such a big problem on the tail tube deep sashi is a problem because on the shoulder area the actual scales are bigger and also thicker so when the fish grows it's easier for the sashi to recede and become more hidden as the fish grows and develops with the tail tube area of the fish the scales are smaller and thinner a lot thinner so if you've got deep sashi on the tail tube area, it will often remain deep sashi no matter how big the fish gets. So to me, looking at the overall package of this fish, I think the fish is lovely. It does need more sumi further forward. Now this area I think you'll end up later on will end up grouping into a big area of sumi. This area as well I think will become one piece. Um, ideally, it would be nice if it gets more sumi on the shoulder. It's just got one area on the side of the shoulder now well not quite shoulder um, but if that area thickens up more and creeps up a little bit more it'll make the fish all the more attractive I think but I think this kind of fish is easy I think to grow through 90 cm and this kind of fish at 90 cm I think it's easy to put a nice big body on the fish so for me 
a very interesting fish for the future. The only kind of unknown area with the fish is really how nice the sumi will be when it's big. It's possible that maybe as, as a bigger fish the sumi is going to be a little bit too overpowering um, because the sumi style at the moment is a little bit wild, a little bit unpredictable. So the future of this is a little bit of a gamble, a very promising and interesting one, but a little bit unpredictable as far as sumi goes. But nonetheless, I think really interesting. So question Mike, um, you bought this koi as Nisai? Bought this fish as Nisai. Um, Who is yeah. the breeder? This is Sakai Company. Uh, Yos Yosemite Sakai. And this is <coughs> maybe good for also newer hobbyists or hobbyists that just enter. You got Sakai Fish Farm and Sakai Company. Those are two different breeders. That's right. It used to be just Sakai Fish Farm, but basically uh, Yosemite Sakai basically parted company, as it were, and then started his own farm with his son Motohari. So that is now Sakai Company. So it's quite a new farm, only now been breeding about seven or eight years, so still very new um, as far as like track records concerned. What I mean is, it's only like last year, this year, that you'll start seeing jumbo koi really from them um, that have come through the ranks. So I think the future I think is very interesting. I think you'll see more and more of that farm over the next few years. So what bloodlines does he use? Is he using the Sakai bloodlines? Indeed, yeah. Um, I don't know the exact lineages of the parents, but yeah, I mean, it's all basically the same lines. Nice, so you bought this one as Nisai, yeah. so two years old. Two um, years old. now Sanrai, three years old. Yeah. In actual fact, this was bred, I think, in July. So it will be a, a full three-year-old in July of this year. So it's not this even... Year. Not even three years. No. No. So what did stand out immediately when you bought her? Just the body structure, really, colour, kiwa, and the overall pattern of the fish. Those are the things that really took me. Um, Sumi, when I saw the fish in the beginning, I thought, well, I don't really know quite what's going on. But all the other qualities of the fish, to me, were really exciting. So that's why I bought the fish. Nice. And now the big question for the people who are watching hobbyists and dealers, is it still for sale? No, this is a customer fish. Um, and today, koi appreciation. So in this case, it's a sanku. This fish is Sanzai. And came to us in spring last year at 51 cm. And she now measures about 65, slightly under 65 cm. Now, this fish it's not so easy to say how big the size will get. Um, the body structure, to me, is fantastic for koi shows right now. This body type is ideal for showing. Um, but this kind of body structure, it's hard to say just how big the fish will get. And I think this fish, I think, should grow certainly over 75 cm, and I think will grow through 80. But beyond 80, it's really hard to say. It might be the case that this fish, as it grows, will develop its bone structure and build up more structure that way. Um, but right now, this kind of body structure, as far as size and potential goes, is a little bit hard uh, to predict. But the strongest thing about this fish is sumi. The sumi quality um, and sumi placement is just absolutely beautiful. And um, particularly the shoulder area, the sumi is really thick, really glossy. Um, and again here, Sumi Kiva style is really nice. Sumi on these other areas is a little bit less finished up. Um, but I think the Sumi all the way through the rest of this fish will become really, really nice, really easily. Kiva is really good on the fish. Um, Sashi style is good. I think this fish, frankly, I wish we were taking it to Tokyo Koi Show um, this weekend. But unfortunately... Um, she is not going. She will stay here. Absolutely amazing fish, Mike. And um, yeah, what stands out is the sumi quality and the skin quality. Yeah. And Sweet. if you look a bit to the, if you take a closer look at the Benny as well, 
it has that nice 3D pattern, which you, you can see it on this pattern very good. So you see the darker parts in the, the darker um, pigment in the, in, the red, uh, in the red scales. And that's something that stand, stands out as well. Um, Shiroji, very nice, white. And um, what I really like is the, the, the back of the koi as well. So you have the nice sumi pattern, it's like nice divided yeah. and even though it's not finished as you can see yeah. like on the shoulders, um, the balance of the fish is, uh, is really good. Uh, it's a nice so. place in the, in the shiroji, on top of the shiroji and yeah. um, great fish. So can you tell me a bit more about the, um, when you bought it and what stand out, who's the breeder? Um, this fish is Sakai Company. Um, we got the fish literally last minute before the fish went to the mud pond. Um, so this was one fish that was kept hidden away um, as knee side. But we got the fish in, it was about a week before that they were due to go off to the mud pond. They'd already photographed the fish and weighed the fish um, ready for the photo album to go to the mud pond. But literally went there and got the fish just before it went. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. And I think... That was towards the end of May, so at 51 cm that she was there through until now 65. It was late bread and knee size, so small, but 14 cm from knee size through to sand size I think is actually really good going, good growth. So is there anything you can tell about sunk in general, what um, most of the sunk miss or what is very important to look at when you're selecting sunk at young age? With young age, to be honest with you, my my own feeling is that actually bloodline itself is really important. I think judging sanki just on face value is actually difficult, um, particularly sanki because sanki body structure is somewhat unpredictable. It needs to be, as well as being something you can see within the fish, it needs to be in bloodline as well is the bloodline in the fish typically doesn't make a, bit, a nice big body when the fish grows, then actually, even if the fish looks like it's got a really good bone structure, uh, more often than not, it won't actually build a good body, no matter how nice it looks. Um, so it does need to be in the actual lineage. So if you're looking at older siblings from the same breeding, you need to be looking for indication that those fish typically are putting on a good body with Sankey. Then it gives you kind of more reassurance when you're buying younger fish. So maybe a stupid question. I know stupid questions doesn't <coughs> exist, but I'm gonna ask it as well. So you were talking about bloodlines. Mm. Do you especially look at the females or the males as well when you were talking about bloodlines? I mean, how do they, how do you judge the bloodlines? Is it only based on the female koi or? When I say bloodline, I mean, I'm kind of more so talking about the fruits of the bloodline. So rather than specifically looking at the male and female parent and using that as a judgment call for what I want, what I'm actually looking for is fish from the same parent set that are older and to get some indication from those fish um, as to how the bloodline performs. So that's the point to me that's important. Of course, I think with female parents, usually the body structure from a female gets carried down to the offspring. So Quite often, if you put a koi, let's say, like this, alongside the picture of its female parent, you'll often find that the body structure, body shape, is very similar, bears the same resemblance. What can be misleading, though, is that when breeders are using parent fish as a parent, the fish, from that first point that they start breeding, the fish is basically slowly being destroyed um, by the breeding process. So you've got to kind of look at the parent fish when it was in its heyday or when it's just on its first or second time breeding because after that the colour gets a lot of damage from the stress of breeding and egg production and all of that side of things um, and the body structure itself often becomes either bent or lacking shape because of breeding so um, it's a difficult one so comparing the offspring to the female parent when the fish was at its best I think is all the, the better way. If you looked at a lot of parent koi that were, let's say, a breeder's been using a parent fish five seasons consecutively, if you look at that parent fish and use that as a judgment for the fish you're buying, you'll probably not buy it. 
<coughs> Sorry. Um, do you do you do you look at the, the parent koi that are still living, or also the parent koi that are passed away? Because sometimes. So yeah, sometimes. I mean, if the parents just died, I mean, it's if the parents just died, the chances are that um, it's already old and misshapen and so on. Anyway, so I would still try to look at, say, the fish when it was at its best. I mean, if you look at a breeder portfolio, if you like a breeder magazine and that kind of thing, saying a portfolio of parent fish and that kind of thing. That will be usually the parent fish when it was at its best. Um, the parent fish now might not look the same because of how much it's been through. It's basically every year it's kind of going through its own little war. And how do you get your information? Is that by asking a lot of questions to the yeah, breeders? Yeah, asking a lot of questions and repeated visits to breeders and just kind of for want of a better phrase, chewing the fat, as we say. Yeah. A Kuhaku to show you um, here in Hiroshima, in our fish house. So this fish came to us as Nisai last year, uh, last spring, was I think 57, 58 cm, and she's now 73 cm, uh, Sanzai. So done really, really well. Body structure I particularly love about this. The body I think is just fantastic. I think really easy to grow huge. So I'm hoping that this coming autumn, as Yonsai, this fish will be over 80, 80 something. Um, I'm quite confident of that. Um, but I think in the future, I think this fish is really interesting. Body structure is fantastic. It absolutely yeah. is, and <clears throat> so it's Sunsai, three years old. Yeah. Uh, and from this side now, this point of view, you saw how amazing this body is. It's yeah, body a great line. example of a... Body line's beautiful, not fat, really nice smooth curve through the body underneath. Um, that blends really nicely into the tail chew. Tail chew's really nice and thick, so you've not got... It doesn't suddenly go into like a, a female looking fish with a skinny tail chew, but it's really strong all the way through right until the actual tail itself starts i think it's beautiful shoulder power on the fish is nice um i think this kind of fish to my thinking is an easy 90 cm plus fish and i think at that kind of size i think this thing would have a really really huge powerful body at that kind of size so who is the breeder this is sakai company Nice. We do do other breeders' fish too, not only Sakai <laughs> Company. Sakai Company. Yeah, absolutely amazing fish. Yeah. So you bought her as Nisai. Yeah. Um, it's a bit different than for like the real diehard koi fans that go along quite a time now, uh, who have might maybe seen the um, uh, Jumbo Tosai mm. video she did with Mark Gardner back um, in the days. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, Mark is not. Um, sadly, not. Sadly, he's not uh, here yeah. anymore. Um, I was a big fan of those videos and we discussed yeah. about it but where do you look at at the fish when it's Nisai especially with Kohaku um, we also just discussed uh, something about pattern uh, when you yeah. choose I mean, a fish I think as a younger fish or a smaller fish most people wouldn't be overly taken with this kind of pattern it's not really so exciting but for me what's nice about the pattern it kind of wraps down here comes back up, wraps down again comes back up um, makes it just interesting enough and I think the balance on this side balances how deeply the pattern wraps on the other side shoulder area is nice head pattern I think is nice tail tube pattern kind of balances it up quite nicely so I think the style of fish is good but I think this kind of fish is the kind of fish that you can grow it jumbo build a huge body on it and suddenly when you're seeing this white area showing a lot more because of that volume and the pattern getting pushed up more. Um, and again, like seeing more of the shoulder area and more of this area back here. I think as a jumbo fish, this fish will look, will look so much nicer, this style of fish, than it does right now. So, like I say, it's a kind of thing right now maybe hasn't got so much popularity in its style. Um, but as a jumbo fish, I think it should look really nice. Yeah, it is. So, um, Sakai Company, uh, I've yeah. never been there to be honest, 
what is their special? Uh, what, what is what does they breed the most? Because uh, we have seen some amazing sanka. Now we have seen some yeah. great kohakus. Is it go sanka day? Go sanka. So kohaku and sanka are the prominent um, breeds uh, or variety, should I say? They also produce some showa and some kajaka also. Um, kajaka are very interesting. Um, very old bloodline get big really easy um, and also like their Kajaku Nisai like body structure and size I think is um, extremely big and quite unlike a lot of Kajaku you would see around these days yeah absolutely amazing Kohaku so what's the plan with the fish does it stay inside um, what's yeah. your future goal with it I want to get this fish really big um, and really good with a bit of luck um, if I sell it, it needs to be sold to someone who trusts me a lot and somebody who can afford to lose money buying the fish. Because there is an element of gamble with a the fish, there is with any fish, but this kind of fish for me, I'm really excited about the future of it, but I want it to stay here several years and if it stays here several years, it needs to be somebody that I feel I know really well and I feel really confident that they'll be pragmatic about anything that doesn't work out um, you know for me to sell a fish to somebody of course it's up to them if they want to leave it here one year two year or whatever that's always up for discussion but with this kind of fish if it's not the right kind of person to buy the fish I'd rather just not sell it um, I'd rather just keep the thing secret secretly to be honest with you I think that's beautiful that's absolutely beautiful Today we are here in Hiroshima, um, in this case looking at a five year old Sanki. So this is now five years old, 80 centimeter exactly. Um, this is one that actually I was, I would have liked to have taken to Tokyo Koi Show, but um, anyway, this time she's not going to go, but I think this body structure though is just fantastic. For the Koi Show, the amount of body weight that this fish is carrying is really really good for Tokyo show color quality on this fish is absolutely beautiful kiwas really superb all the way through the kiwa finish is just fantastic every scale all the way through the fish the kiwa is just so consistent so refined sashi style I think on the fish is really nice as well sumi this area is really good on the white ground obviously this falls on the red um, so it's hard to kind of make any judgment of that kind of sumi but this area is on the white um, this area too I think the fish still needs a bit more finish in terms of its sumi um, for the koi show but right now I think this actually would look really good for us if we took this koi along to the koi show um, and maybe she could get a prize too but certainly I think there's a lot of impressive qualities about this fish in particular in terms of body and color so where is this fish bred and uh, when did you bought it so this fish was a sakai company uh, we sold the fish as nisai she's now been with us for a year and we've raised her now through until 80 um, and i'm quite pleased with how we've built the body up or how she's built her body up it's not my doing um, so at this lineage, she's just bodied up really nicely. So yeah, now five years old. And is it yours? Is it a customer koi? Customer fish, yeah. yeah. It was sold as an Nissan. Wow. Yeah, and it's almost hard to see the comparisons of the size, but if Mike sits next to each other, next to the koi, I can, I can you, can see, it. you can see Give her a hug. <laughs> how big it is. <laughs> That is insane. That is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, body's fantastic. Yeah. Well, beside the body, what I also yeah. really like is the, um, the quality of the belly. Yeah, um, 
With Sanka, I'm always used to look immediately at the sumi. That is also perfect on this fish. For example, on the first part of the yeah. uh, of the fish. Yeah, this sumi and the sumi key was beautiful. That is sumi key was so refined. Beautiful. And here it has some sashi that still has to develop. Yeah, that's right. The sumi area on here is still developing. It's developed enough, but I think it will still fill in and tighten up a bit more. Yeah, and what I really like is the red and black yeah. here on the back of the tail, just before the odome. Mm. That is something that I really like. So I have a question, Mike. Yeah. Um, we are talking most of the time when we're talking about Showa, we see colors in the fins. Yeah. With Showa, you want to have that like the same. Um, how do you say the same balance in the fins? The but with Sanka, yeah. the Montego yes. But with Sanka, um, it's allowed to have like a different pattern, right? Well, actually, um, what they call Tejima. Te means hand. So Tejima, like Sumi in the fins on Sanki, is actually disliked. Um, so this has it in one fin. Um, to me, it's neither here nor there, but quite often if you get Sumi in the fins of the fish on Sanki, it can develop too much of it and just ruin the fish. But the trouble is, is with Tejima, with Sumi in the fins of the fish, it quite often goes hand in hand with sumi that develops too wildly and doesn't get any quality. Um, so it's better, like one or two lines in the fins, I think are fine. But if you've got a lot of it, it kind of gives you some indication that the fish might develop a lot of sumi too easily and not get enough refinement. So I think with this fish, with this sumi, it's fine. The fish is old enough and big enough and that sumi in the fin has developed over time. If it had that sumi as knee side, maybe right now we wouldn't be looking at the same fish. We'd be looking at one with a lot of sumi in a lot of other areas. Well, that's interesting to know. So what's the future plan with this fish? I don't know. Um, it depends on the owner because I would like to keep the fish here another year or two years, but if I say to the owner, can I keep it and can you pay growing fees, that kind of thing, the pressure's on me because I ask them. So if the customer says to me, if the owner says, oh, can you keep the fish, for me that's fine, I can't ask them. So it needs to be their wish. So I'm hoping that their wish is to leave the fish here through this year and possibly the year after. I'd like to see this fish at 90 cm and get it to Tokyo. The downside is, if the fish is 90 cm, it's a lot of physical work to pick up and pack and get to Tokyo. And a lot of koi food every single year. Uh, uh, the koi food, <laughs> no, that I can handle, but... To make a small bridge to yeah. koi food, um, I asked you this question yesterday. What food do you use? And do you use different foods throughout the whole season? We are actually using sake, akari, um, balance, mixed with the odokan food which is essentially it's sake akari but a little bit more color enhancing than sake akari's um, color up food so we're using a mixture of those two and also a mixture of sinking and floating so um, yeah and that throughout the whole year throughout the whole year we're using the same food oh, absolutely amazing fish so i don't know if i already asked something about the bloodline for this sanka um, does it have similar bloodlines as the other fish we saw in the previous episodes? It does indeed, yeah. Yeah, same lineage. Great. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. And guys, look at that. Again, I will put my hand next to the fish so you can see how... How small your hands are. How small my hands are. Well, they're not the biggest one, but this fish is incredible. Absolutely unbelievable. Look at that. Amazing. So we just uh, did some koi appreciation with Mike and um, we're going to record some more footage. Uh, we're going to pick up my koi, maybe it will be in this episode or in the documentary. But I don't know, I'm not sure if it will be the documentary that will be launched first or the single koi appreciation episode. So there will be a question for me at the moment, uh, but you will finally uh, figure that out. So I have one more thing guys if you're not subscribed to the channel 
I think 70% of our viewers are not subscribed yet, so subscribe to the channel uh, so we can reach the goal of 1 million subscribers. Um, and of course, if you want to support me, you can go to my Patreon page, the link is in the description below. And don't forget to go to Yume Koi Japan, follow Mike on Facebook, I think mo most of the time Facebook, YouTube, and then Instagram. Am I right? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Not so good with YouTube, but I try, but not so much time. Well, there are some amazing videos out there of Mike and also with other people that make videos. So go check them out, guys. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video and don't forget.